Hello everybody, the Nameless Narcissist here. Once again, Simple Man, diagnosed with MPD, given the facts of narcissistic personality disorder and things that go on in your head. Your head, my head, Jesus Christ. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, but keep in mind, I am no clinician. I can only speak to my own experiences and the research that I read. So I just had a thought today, not even a thought. Um, every now and then, I, I always take showers in the morning. I spend like two hours in there. And I just start lamenting about things that have happened in my past. And usually I'm always like, okay, this was something that I'm just kind of being crazy about. I know I should calm down. But there's one thing in my life, I'm sure there's more than one thing. There's a couple things in my life, but I'm only talking about one, that has bothered the fuck out of me since it has happened. Um, I've mentioned this before, and I'm sure some people who have been in this channel for a while back when I didn't know what landscape mode was, will remember this story. Um, also, I want to point out that this is going to be, yes, it's about gaslighting narcissists, but this is about gaslighting self-aware narcissists, which is a very different situation than uh, unaware ones, which maybe I should talk about at some point. Mm, who knows? Who, who knows? Who knows? Um, this is when I came out as a narcissist to, one, to somebody that I felt close to at the time. Um, like, I hid my diagnosis for a long time because it's like, I'm sure you guys can imagine how people would react to somebody telling, <clears throat> to you telling somebody that you're a narcissist, right? Generally, it probably won't be a very good reaction. And I, but eventually I got into this mood where I was just like at a bonfire, just feeling so envious of everyone around me. And not only envious, but like despondent. I'm looking around at people just having fun and just being or being in happy relationships that I looked at and I was like, but you guys aren't perfect for each other. How are you happy? Um, just watching friends be friends, some people relaxing. And I got into this mood because of it. And I like run to my car. I don't run to my car, but I'm like, hey, I gotta, like one sec, I'll be right back. And I go to, into my car <clears throat> and like, I like break down. I'm like being... I'm like so upset because like I realized in that moment that like I have been robbed of some of the fundamental pieces of the human experience. That I'm never going to be able to have what some of these people in my life have. That I'm never gonna be able to just relax or just love or be naturally vulnerable. And I had a friend who like saw I was upset and like came in the car and like, I was like pissed drunk. And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm fine. Well, like, don't worry. I was just being capricious, whatever. You can go back to the party. But like she insisted and like it ended with me actually confessing my diagnosis and how, and like admitting how like I had hurt her and I know I hurt her in the past and how that like wasn't a good thing, et cetera, et cetera. And like, despite my hesitation, she replied, she responded in a really good way in my mind which didn't last. Because then, and this is where the gaslighting comes in, is that every goddamn thing I did from then on out was viewed through this lens of the fact that I was a narcissist. I used to be able to joke arrogantly, like make arrogant jokes, right? I'd be like, yeah, I am the best person in the world, but it was like, you know, not sarcastic. It was just, it was just a joke, you know? And don't get me wrong, there was like some truth to it, but that's how I dealt with my grandiosity or any joke I made about like my mental problems, which she knew were a thing prior to this, just not what it was, immediately became a bad thing. Cause I'm joking about something that serious, I guess. Which even though joking is the most healthy way to fucking, whatever. It's a, it's a good coping mechanism as most psychologists say. And like, and like, um, I don't know, she, but like, and I'm sure part of it was the fact that like for a while she had like a huge thing for me, but like we were past that. And like she, and then she got another boyfriend. So maybe it's just like she forgot about me because you know, I wasn't an option anymore. Maybe, I don't know. And like, she just stopped being around me after a little bit. Like I, I went through a really rough breakup too. And that's when I got like really bad. It was just like, oh, you never want to see me and you don't care about me. And like one of her close friends, um, well, her, like, her and this other girl were best friends, and this other girl had BPD, the first cl other cluster I've ever met. And actually, my first two videos on the channel are, is still, like, me and that girl. 
And both of them like basically just dropped me out of nowhere and would say everything I did, like anytime I had any issue was because I was being insane because I'm a narcissist. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking like, well, what if it was considered a narcissist, right? In some, well, in some cases, yeah. But like when nothing I did was an issue until it was revealed I was a narcissist, a whole other story in my mind. Not to mention, like, I think I had some pretty good qualms with um, some of the ways that they were acting. Like, I was used to, like, hanging out with them, like, every other week. And then all of a sudden, I go through a breakup, and then they're just never around. I got sent, like, I got sent, like, videos from Lee Hammock um, from her, which is really funny looking back at it now. Now that, like, I've, I've like, talked to him, even, um, where he's talking about, like, you know, what toxic people can do and stuff like that. Uh, and I remember it vividly, because one of them was, like, oh, narcissists will go to the therapy just to become better narcissists. And I'm like, well, that's fucking interesting. What are you implying? And it wouldn't have, like, bothered me if it weren't for the fact that, like, this was literally, like, at the tail end of our friendship and stuff like that, which I was not getting rid of. I was not, like, throwing away this friendship. She was just distancing herself from me for no reason. And, like, again, like, people will be like, oh, what if your behaviors and narcissism were being, like, really bad and stuff like that? We were literally friends for, like, a year before this, had no issues. You know, occasionally I had, like, I would have, like, an emotional moment, right? But, like, we worked through it, it would be fine. And then as soon as, as soon as it's out that I'm a narcissist, things start being weird. And, like, during the time that, like, what, after I, like, came out about being a narcissist, in quotes, like, I had this, like, big ex I don't know, she was upset with me over something that, like, I was, like, having a real... She didn't really explain why she was upset about it. And, like, I was, like, so... I didn't really understand why, but, like, I went out of my... I literally, like, opened up and told her, like, Oh, you know, I really care about you, and you're almost like family to me. Which was true at the time. I considered her one of my closest friends. And, like, she was taken off guard by it because she didn't know how much I cared about her and stuff like that. But, like... It was just sad, I guess. Because it was, like, one of... Like, me telling somebody my diagnosis at that point was probably the most vulnerable I've ever been with somebody. Especially at that point, because I was still hiding myself, like, all the time. And I knew that my diagnosis wouldn't be received well by people. And then, like, and it's funny because, like, people have these opinions about narcissists, even self-aware ones. And despite me, and so by me um, telling people that, that's, like, a huge vulnerable thing. And I have this pathological thought where if anybody sees who I actually am, then they're going to, like, hate me. And then the irony is that people do hate you for being a narcissist. Like that being one of my vulnerable things, probably the most true thing that I have about myself and people hate me for it. Literally since her, I have not like told anybody in my life how much I care about them. Because like love is just a care on a stick. It's all it is. People, if people know that you love them, they can use that to make you do things and then they'll take it away if you don't do the things that they want. And so, and if you don't tell them that you actually care, they have nothing to use. They'll, they'll always be chasing after your affection because they don't know how much you, uh, you actually care about them. And so they aren't going to threaten to take it away as a means of control, as a means of leverage against what you have to say. And like people would want to say, oh, that's projection. Yeah, it probably is. But like also at the same time, people do that. And I try not to do it. I don't, I, I never tried to, try to do that. I'm, I know that I have to some degree. But like, I, again, I have not told people how much I care about them since that. And it's worked. That's the thing is that people haven't tried to use in a, a, um, a tenderness towards them against me. Because they are never quite sure. They never, and like, honestly, me telling people my diagnosis nowadays is to make them think like, well, maybe he doesn't care about me at all. Because narcissists aren't a, able to care. 
And so <laughs> by me telling them, it almost puts more of a separation between me and them. It makes them question even more. And yeah, people won't say this is shitty. I know it is to some degree. But like, it works, don't it? I don't have to worry about being hurt when everybody else doesn't think that they can hurt me. And so they don't even try. And I haven't been hurt by other people since. Like you guys can say all day, like how unhealthy this is and how it's making my life more miserable. But the issue is that it does work. I know it's not healthy. But it's like you put yourself out there and you try to talk to people and say like, I really care about you and please don't leave me basically. But they, and then, then they know that when people feel secure, they don't have, I don't know. When they don't feel like you can live without them, then like, I, it makes me look weak. And when people think I'm weak, they think they can trample over me and they see me as a child, which obsessively I probably am to some degree. That's just what happens. That's the only situation I, I have. And don't get me wrong, I ended up, I ended up like the bad guy in that situation. Because I didn't want to be left first. I don't get left first. I wanted to show that I didn't, that like, I was better. And so I sent a very cutting message. And yes, I know that wasn't right. I know, I don't have, I don't have any excuse for that. And, but I mean, well, fuck. She should be appreciative because she could show everybody else and show that I am the bad guy. And she abandoned me. Both of them did. I was going through a break. I was literally suicide. I literally like attempted suicide during this point. Because I was so alone and they knew how desperate I was just for like some warmth. And I was like, I, I'm not doing a good job explaining this. I know I'm not. I was just alone. And they were the first person I told were like my family. And it just felt like they didn't, that didn't mean anything. And I remember like, and now when I'm in like a moment of caprice and I tell people that like, I do care about them and stuff like that. I mean, they always are surprised, right? I will just ignore the fact that it happened. It's happened only a handful of times. Because again, if people feel secure, they'll just use it. They won't want to make you feel loved anymore. Yeah, and I know it's toxic, I know it's bad. And like, I don't really leverage it the same way I used to. And I don't plan to. Babe. I don't know, I feel alone. I just wanna be able to open up with somebody again. But it's like when you have evidence your entire life that you are not lovable. Like, what are you supposed to do? And it's like, I don't know. I would say the closest thing to unconditional love that I've gotten is literally here on this channel, but I'm like, 
and like don't get me wrong i appreciate every single person that's here hell you guys are a little bit of a victim of my uh tendency not to share my affection here too but it's like ah, it, it just like rings in my head this thing that i realize is so true where somebody was like where like somebody was saying something that wasn't like completely detrimental towards narcissists and then they were like well like it's hard to deal with our like you can't deal with narcissists in real life look at nameless like we all of us love him here but at the same time um he is constantly having issues in his personal life that's so fucking true i hate the fact that it's true i really hate the fact that it's true like you guys get even if you watch every single one of my videos in a month and if you are that's kind of that's probably unhealthy <laughs> but like um you get maybe my videos are probably about like 10 minutes per so like what you get three hour like 30 time fuck i don't know how to do the math on that you get like a couple hours of actually knowing me and that doesn't give you much to go off of I'm just, fuck, why am I in such a mood? Sorry. I know this is unlovable. <laughs> That's another thing. It's like whenever I show emotions, everybody hates me for it. Okay, not hates me for it, but like people hate when I show, show my emotions because I'm intense. I just miss the people that I thought loved me, I guess. Not gonna tell them though. Take a front of the night's gasping.